the opportunity arose to work with Dr. Akum and his team on uh, doing similar computational modeling of the atria of these patients with ESIS, the embolic stroke of undetermined source. And this is a fascinating, uh, this is a fascinating disease because these patients have strokes that resemble uh, in many ways the strokes that patients with atrial fibrillation have, but they don't have the atrial fibrillation. So what we did here was we constructed sophisticated computational models of a large number of patients with AFib and a large, numbers, a, a large number of patients with this type of stroke, with ESIS, and we compared them side by side in terms of how the computational models behave. And, you know, the, our finding is that from the standpoint of these computational modelings, they remain indistinguishable, which suggests that it's the milieu of triggers for, uh, for, the, for, the, for the arrhythmia themselves that differs between these patients in vivo. And so it's exciting from a computational standpoint because the, you know, the most enthusiastic result that we have to communicate from this study is a new question. So in, in, in a lot of ways, we're sort of writing our own ticket uh, for the future of this research. If we can learn more from what we see in the, in the imaging, uh, about diseases like embolic stroke of undetermined source, we think that there's a real opportunity here to make a massive impact in the lives of the patients who are afflicted with this. Right now, the clinical care of patients with this type of stroke um, is limited by the available data, which suggests that the best way to try and prevent a stroke in these patients is by giving them an aspirin. And um, it may or may not be the best treatment for them uh, because some other blood thinner type of medications may work better um, in the properly selected patient uh, population. So uh, where this work might uh, advance the field is in identifying those patients who uh, might actually um, benefit from being on that stronger blood thinner. What we care about is uh, preventing another stroke from happening, um, but in the future we hope that uh, we may even be able to identify patients who are at risk of stroke and be able to intervene even before, uh, before they um, come to us after their strokes. Before we take any of these findings to the clinical world, we have to demonstrate that um, there's going to be an improvement in the management of these patients uh, with strokes and not any uh, increase in the harm. So the best way to actually test this is by designing a study that uses the findings from this one and assigns treatments in a randomized fashion based on uh, the findings uh, from, the, from the fibrosis and the, the simulation results. So if we're able to demonstrate that this, a, this is a good strategy to try and select uh, the right patients for this kind of treatment, um, then this is when it starts changing the standard of care and the, and the management of these, of these patients.